Hey guys, it's Todd from Like-Minded Lunatics bringing you another drink, play, swear. It's all we do around here. I mean, besides hoping our team makes it to the big game, it's all it really occurs to us to do around here. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Drink, Play, Swear. And welcome back to Like-Minded Lunatics. I'll get it out eventually. While I'm thinking about it, please hit that subscribe button. Bang, right there in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. It would be a fantastic Christmas gift to your fellow like-minded lunatics. If you showed us that you're subscribing, Mark and I inching closer to 1,000 every day and uh, couldn't do it without you. Quite literally couldn't do it without you. So please, bang, hit that subscribe if you haven't done so already. Okay. Uh, what do we do here at Drink Place Where? Well, before I get to that, let me tell you, there's plenty of stuff on the channel for you to check out. Mark Gifford does a lot of great stuff on the channel, co-creator of this channel and my good buddy. But he's been doing a great segment with another friend, Lottie, and it's called Lottie's Rock Ucation. You can check out that playlist there. It's fantastic. Uh, great to meet Lottie uh, somewhat recently and uh, and have him become a, a fixture around here. You know what I mean? Uh, he, he's practically on the channel more than me. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. What are we playing today? Well, what do we do here at Drink Place where it's exactly what it sounds like? Play a game, usually a classic one. Pair it with a beverage, and I tell you a story. Well, what do we got today? It's Tecmo. Whoa. <laughs> I'm spilling all over the controller. First one, I promise. Um, we're playing Tecmo Bowl on the NES from 1990. Pairing it with a Jim Beam and Coke. Get yourself something. I've been uh, doing a lot of the Christmas singing. Getting into the spirit of things. Um, Mark did a great Monday video matchup where he was talking about he doesn't really care for most Christmas tunes. I don't know. I can get into it. Uh, maybe more than he can. All right. <clears throat> well, we're playing this game, and you see who I'm going to be, the Dallas Cowboys, because if you're not from around these parts, it's uh, it's the only team, the professional football team we have uh, in Texas. I'm not going to count Houston. How could you? Um, but uh, checking out Tecmo Bowl here. Uh, I don't I don't know, great game, but I loved it as a kid. It was a renter for me. Uh, and uh, just thrilled that Dallas is in the picture because I'm a Dallas Cowboys fan. I was born a Cowboys fan. Here's the thing. If you're not really into the NFL, you're not really into football, American football, that is. You go, I don't know. I just never really got into it. Well, it's because you weren't born a certain kind of fan. You see, I was born a Cowboys fan because my dad was a Cowboys fan. Uh, there's no choice. I don't have any choice in the matter. <laughs> it's who I am in the world. Grew up a Cowboys fan, so I thought today, while we play this game, I would do some football memories. I'm a breaking for it. Oh, oh man, should I try a pass or the running is the run is is gonna work for me here? So I'm gonna keep up the run until they uh, figure out how to stop me. Let's see. They don't have a very good line, you see. Ooh, okay. Oops, I picked a play. I don't know what I selected. There's only four plays, but get that. Yes. Bang. Uh, okay, uh, born a Cowboys fan. Here, let me uh, let me show you here, right? If I can, um, here's me and my dad. Here's me and my dad. Whoa, right here, watching the Cowboys together. I got my Gremlins, got my Gremlins shirt on, and then here's me uh, pretending to be a, a cowboy. I, I know I'm awful at getting the angle right on these things. <laughs> There's me and my family. That's my first haircut, by the way. First haircut. Mom made me this years ago. Uh, now that they're no longer around, it's uh, nice to be able to cherish the old days with stuff like that. And the Cowboys were a part, a fixture of the conversation in my house as a kid. I'm going to swing all the way around here, and I'm going to make a break for it. Whew, I feel good about this. Don't you guys feel good about this? Getting a little warm in here. <laughs> as a little kid in the 80s, uh, Tom Landry was the coach. And... Um, you know, the Cowboys weren't quite America's team yet, um, but they were well-liked across uh, the country. And, um, except for the folks who didn't like them right very very much. Now, every fan has got sort of, especially Cowboys fans, the team that they hate the most, right? My dad, for my dad and his generation, it was the Redskins, right? Because the Washington Redskins, well, first of all, the Washington Redskins 
really fought hard, the owner, that is, of that team fought hard for the Cowboys not to be created at all. So the day that the first day of the Cowboys existing in the world, they already have a rival. Uh, the coach didn't 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 want him to be able to ha- be a team. Um, and I love that we are in the NFC East because then we get to take on, and that's a touchdown pass, friends. Dallas. Touchdown pass, 8-bit heaven right there. Look at that. Hey, 6 nothing. Um, and so built-in rivalry right there. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Do I know how to do this? I mean, it's a two-button system, so I think I can figure it out. 7 nothing. And uh, let me see if I can pause here. Uh, for a little more of the story. I don't think it's going to let me pause. Let me see if I can take care of this guy. Oh, this is Miami, huh? Uh He got past me. What? This is an embarrassment. Get over there, Todd. Gotta get on top of him. Okay, the other guy's got him. I'm going to cream him real good. Oh! (laughs) Sorry, I'm into the game, uh, and I'm, uh, I'm forgetting to talk. And also, I'm not very good at defense, but neither is the other team. I'm going to see if I just sit here for a second, if it'll let me just get away with that. Okay. So being a fan of the Cowboys, my dad it, it was always um, against the Redskins. That was him. You know, he loved old Western movies, and so this Cowboys and Indians thing worked for him. Well, my dad's not around. He never got to see the Washington Redskins become lose their name, and, and now they're kind of in limbo. I don't think he would have liked that too much. Not that he liked Washington, but uh, you know, for him, he's he was an old school guy, born in the '30s. Tradition to him, as opposed to being respectful, right? Um, but uh, anyway, for me, it's it, it's not the Redskins or the former uh, Redskins that were always the most hated. For me, it was the Eagles, man. Oh, and listen, fans uh, and folks and friends from Philly. That's a lot of F sounds. Fans, folks, and friends from Philly, talking to you, like-minded Gemma. Uh, I love your town. I've told you I love your town. Love the food. Uh, I think it runs the gamut in terms of food, Philly does. Uh, like San Antonio, good fine dining, but also good like street corner food. You know what I mean? Um, uh, good, be- beautiful history, the cobblestone streets and everything. Uh, but uh, the Eagles, you see, they just ruined our season too many times. I can't forgive them. I wish they'd put me against the Eagles here. Okay. So, growing up watching football, but the most exciting time for me as a Cowboys fan was 1992-1993, right? Because Cowboys fans know that that was the two consecutive years we went to the Super Bowl, won the Super Bowl uh, against the Buffalo Bills. It was a golden age of the Cowboys, you know, Troy Aikman, uh, slinging passes, uh, Michael Irvin catching Daryl Johnson. Johnston, sorry, fans. Uh, ooh, I'm breaking free. Look at this. I punk that dude. Do you see that? Uh-oh, this other guy's going to get to me. All the way down to the 27-yard line. Okay. Uh, so, uh, the, playing the Buffalo Bills in the Super Bowl. Two years in a row and creaming them. It was the best we have ever looked. Uh, those two years. I taped it on VHS, rewatched those Super Bowls a hundred times along with, you remember the ads for those? Hey, I wonder if Mark, if you can pull up the Bud Bowl. Budweiser had this Budweiser versus Bud Light during the commercials. They're great. Why don't you take a look at that while I have some beverage. You are looking live at Bud Bowl 2 as unbeaten Budweiser battles undefeated Bud Light in what's become known as the war. Let's go down to the locker rooms. You guys are the king. Now let's go turn out their lights. We've waited all year for this. Let's go knock them on their butts. A lot of emotion bottled up in there. What about today's matchup? Well, you got the big arm of Bud Light's Budway Joe versus Budweiser's explosive Beechwood backs, Billy Bud and Bobby Bud. But the big question is how Bud Light will stop Bud's appliance of defiance, the freezer. The cans are going wild. And here comes the king of beer. Bud, Bud, Bud. And the one light that outshines them all. We we'll be back with Bud Bowl 2 right after this. They were fun. Uh, And so I was actually probably recording the Super Bowl for those. I always wished they had made those toys. I don't know why I liked it so much, like beer bottles playing football. But it was like, I don't know, I thought it was super cool. Um, And so there was an AFC rivalry with with, uh, Buffalo as a result, because we just played them in two... Oops. 
Played him in two consecutive Super Bowls and really creamed him, you know? Um, but uh, loved to play them. And, you know, it's funny how uh, sports fans uh, can be so devoted to their team and they can be so devoted to touchdown right there. Uh, they can be devoted to uh, facts, statistics, right? But they can also be, like, really <clears throat> illogical and superstitious. And uh, that's, I think, a fun part of being a sports fan is is the superstitions and the, the little things not only the athletes but the fans do to ensure victory for their club. One of the funny things that, that I, I read and found interesting... Uh-oh. Ooh. Oh, okay. Mm, kind of a dinky kick. Sorry about that. I'm embarrassed. Okay. Okay, what is this? End of the first quarter. Okay, end of the first. All right, let's stop for a second. Ooh, uh, let's watch another uh, Bud Bowl. Let's watch another Bud Bowl now that we're going into the second quarter. Mark, can you find... Yeah. You're going to have to go into the basement uh, of Like-Minded Lunatic Studios, Mark. I don't know if you know where that is or yeah, if you have a key. I have one. Way down in the basement, I've got those reel-to-reels. Right. And you're gonna, they're not alphabetical yet. They're just uh, kind of jumbled up. I have them in a box if okay. you can look for them. All right. Um, they're in a box called Todd's... Here it is. Football memories. No, I know, I'm it. sorry. That's nope. a weird way to categorize and organize stuff. But yeah. you'll find the rest of those Bud Bowls there. I got Let's it. take another look at one of those. All right. Got it. Rolling. We're back at Bud Bowl 2. It's been a crisp, cold first quarter. And they're even calling for ice and snow. Budweiser's ball on the Bud Light 48. Defense! 23! Pitch to Billy Butt. Whoa! It's a beach one rollout! Whoa! Give me a At the end of a controversial first quarter, it's Bud Light 13, Budweiser 3. We'll be back. Classic ads. I'm an ad junkie. I'm an advertising junkie. I just, I, I, I can't make sense of it. You know, my wife will skip the ads, and I'm watching the show for the ads. So, anyway, superstition, etc., um, the town of Buffalo, Texas, which is a kind of a North Texas town, the town of Buffalo, Texas, they kind of got it in their heads that, um, that they needed to change the name of the town for the week of the Super Bowl when Dallas was facing, uh-oh, breaking free, when Dallas was facing Buffalo in the Super Bowl. Here comes Toddy McWright. I want to take that ball away from him. I did. <laughs> Strip the ball from him. That's pretty epic. Oh, I didn't. I had a completely wrong sense of what happened there, and they scored on me as a result. I'll, I'll, I'll finish the story in a minute. Buffalo, Texas, North Texas town, uh, decided that they were going to be superstitious, and the mayor was like, okay, we're going to go through the paperwork process to change the name of our town for one week, Super Bowl week. And so they changed their name from Buffalo, Texas, for one week, to Blue Star, Texas, to honor the Dallas Cowboys, Blue Star, Texas. Well, the Cowboys went on to win that 1992 Super Bowl, and so when fate would have it that the two teams would play each other again in the 1993 Super Bowl, I mean, Buffalo, Texas felt like they had to do it again. You know, it's like when you wear a game and you're wearing a certain pair of socks, you got to wear those socks again, right? So they changed the name again. Dallas won again. A uh, fun little fact about all of that is that two years after that, uh, in 1995, the Dallas Stars, the hockey team, went to the Stanley Cup, and they happened to go to the Stanley Cup against a team from Buffalo, New York. And so Buffalo, Texas, for a third time, can you imagine the waste of money and the waste of time all of this took? They changed their name one more time for one week, week of the Stanley Cup, the Green Star, Texas, because the Dallas Stars are green. Anyway, um, you know, growing up, it was how I bonded with my dad was to talk football. And so, you know, in a, in a, in a generation where you didn't always say, I love you, you know, as a father to a son, what did you do to show affection? You cook a good steak for him. Um, you know, you make sure he's got clean clothes. You make sure he's got some money in his pocket. And you talk sports with him. And that's how you're affectionate with each other. You sit next to each other. Uh oh, look at this. Let's see if I can get a field goal here. They slowed me down. Na -na 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 -na. Man, that's a long field goal if I make that. <gasps> no good. You see how close it was, though? 
All right. I'm not sorry about that. That was a, that was a good try. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to call that a good college try. So after that 93 season, you know, I, I started, I became a teenager soon after that. And I got away from watching football too much. You know, I, I got into rock and roll. I got into hanging out with friends and I was homeless with my parents, especially after you get a car and then you start getting dreams of moving out and going to college and all that. I always kept up with the Cowboys and what was going on with them. But those two years, 92 and 93, uh, firmly planted as my, some of my favorite years of childhood, hanging out with my dad, watching the game. Those Super Bowls where my parents had people over. It was a blast. Years later, when I was living in New York, 2007, I happened to catch a game uh, on Monday Night Football because the Dallas Cowboys and the Buffalo Bills were playing again in Monday Night Football. And they happened to be, you know, a lot of people saying that they were both going to be good that year. This was early in the season. It was like October or something. But they said that it was going to be kind of a big game and that uh, people had been, you know, waiting in line for tickets for hours and it was already cold in Buffalo, New York. And and so it was a big deal. So I made a, a, a cha- you know, a special effort to watch the game that night. And it was a great one. It was one for the ages. And I hadn't cheered that hard for the Dallas Cowboys in a decade or more. I'd gone to college and grad school and, you know, I was playing video games less. I was uh, watching football less. I was, I was reading a lot. Uh, I was... Hanging out in bars, trying to be like a writer, you know. <laughs> when you take yourself that seriously, get get away from some of your hobbies. I'm losing now. I'm not happy about that. We'll see if I can. We'll see if I can uh, score here before I finish the uh, before I finish the story. That game was great in 2007, if you remember it. Um, Dallas was behind most of the game, and a lot of people, you know, if you're not a super fan. You're going to filter off and go watch something else or go do something else by then. But for some reason, I just felt compelled to watch the entire thing because it felt like an important moment for the two teams. And it was reminiscing about childhood and Toddie McWright is going to break free. This dude is coming after me. I'm going to try to get down here. Okay. And this guy's coming after me. I'm going to zigzag Ooh, all the way to the 12 yard line. Let's see if I can. Mark, can we break one more time for one more Bud Bowl video? Let's please? do it. Yeah. In the excitement. They always do that commercial break right when things are getting exciting. Go for it, dude. Rolling. We're back and we got us a blizzard here at Bud Bowl. For Budweiser, it's down to one last play. Three seconds left. They're down by four. Come on, guys. Don't fizzle out on me now. They need a touchdown. They need a miracle. So close. Oh, that's halftime. Mmm, that's halftime. Okay, I'm going to wrap up the story, and then we're going to see if I can score the final goal here, and we're just going to pretend that that's the end of the game. <clears throat> so, speaking of the end of the game, the end of this game was one for the history books. If you're a Cowboys fan, you already know what I'm going to say. Uh-oh. They didn't let me pause. They, they forced me to kick. Uh, so I didn't score. I ran out of time. Hmm. That's a shame. Uh, okay, let's see if I can uh, make them wait for me a second here. The end of that game was so exciting. I don't remember exactly how it all went down, except I remember that we had been down like we were down like eight or something like that with like a minute to go. We go down and score, and then we get a two point conversion. Then, with like less than a minute left, we do an onside kick, we recover it. And then we get a field goal to win the game by one point. Uh, and so we scored like nine points in a in a minute. It was it was huge. It was so exciting. And you know, whatever the sportscasters teams are that they're rooting for, doesn't matter. They're going bananas in, up there. And uh, and I was going bananas. And uh, I called my dad, and I didn't even think about the fact that it was late. You know, because my my dad never stayed up late. But it was Cowboys, and I, I, he was the first person I thought to talk to about it. And so I called him. He answered on the first ring. He said, I knew it was going to be you. 
And we sat there and talked about the Dallas Cowboys winning that game. We reminisced about the 90s and about how how wonderful that team had been. You know, the Cowboys didn't go on to go to the Super Bowl again that year, and they weren't very good. Uh, they haven't been very good for a long time, but this year could be different, Cowboys fans. We're looking good. Not only do the Cowboys look good this year, but the rest of the NFC East, I'm so thrilled to say, is garbage, son. You garbage. So I'm almost tearing up thinking about me and my dad talking on that night. And around Christmas time, sometimes we do that to ourselves. We allow ourselves to sit on the sweet memories that are sad too. So on that note, I'm going to wrap up here. There's no sense in me continuing. You knew I was going to win anyway, right? <laughs> so I hope you guys have a Merry Christmas. I hope it, if you celebrate uh, Hanukkah, I hope you had a, a happy Hanukkah and, and whatever your belief system is. We all know that this is a time of year for us to um, remember our loved ones who have passed, cherish the ones we have, and uh, look to hopefully have uh, more in the future. So in between now and the next time I talk to you, I'm Todd. Thanks for being a like-minded lunatic, and thanks for joining us here Christmas week. In between now and the next time, next time I talk to you, I'm Todd McWright. See ya.